Hey guys, this is Mr. Post, and on today's video, we're going to learn a few things. First thing I want you to leave here today with is having a knowledge of what light actually is. I want you to know what it is, know how to define it, and actually when you see light in the real world, understand exactly what you're looking at. I want you to understand how light is formed, and it's going to tie in with our last bullet here to really understand the relationship between light, the energy levels we've already learned about, and electrons. So we've got three things going on here. What is light? How is it formed? And what's this relationship between light and energy levels and electrons? Now the first thing I want to introduce this with is like a flashlight. I want you to look at this picture and I want you to see the flashlight there. And I want you to actually take two seconds to say, what does it make? What does it take to make like a flashlight actually work? What are the ingredients? In order to get the light shining out of there, what do you need? All right, so take two seconds and think about it, all right? I'll have my answers, you know, when you get back. So but pre press pause and see if you can actually figure out what it takes to make a flashlight produce light. Okay, guys, here we are back, and um, hopefully you kind of answered this correctly. And the two things you really need here, you need a battery, you need an energy source, and you also need the bulb, okay? One of the keys here, you definitely need a source of energy. Your light bulb is not going to glow without a source of energy. Now let's check this out on the next slide here. Similar to the first slide, once again, both pictures here are showing light. Now over here, and our embers, these are literally embers from a fire. Now the fire is not burning anymore, but the wood that was burning beforehand is glowing now. It's hot enough that it's glowing. And on the other side, I'm looking at what is often known as neon lights, but these are not neon lights, these are simply uh, uh, lights. And these are glass tubes. And inside the glass tubes that I'm tracing out right now, inside the glass tubes, it's, uh, it's a hollow glass tube and there's a gas inside there. All right. And the question I want you to think about here is, what is the source of energy to produce the light? Yes, the wood is glowing, the gases inside these tubes are glowing, what is the source of energy that is required to make these things glow? Or I should say, produce light. All right, take a couple seconds, think about it. Okay guys, hopefully it took a couple seconds here. Over here, the source of energy is actually heat. Okay, heat is the energy, and over here, electricity. Is the source of energy. So I need energy, all right? In the first case, I needed a battery. Now I need heat in order to make my wood continue to glow. And in this case, I need electricity. So one of the keys that I want to leave you with right here is that in order for light to be produced, I need an energy source. And that brings us to our, our first definition here. What exactly is light? All right, so what exactly is light? Light is simply energy in the form of waves. All right, and I think we can think of waves as this, energy traveling in this form. All right, and that's what light is. And visible light is the Roy G. Biv spectrum, red, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo, and violet. Those are the, the, the colors of light that make up what we know as visible light. So it's simply energy in the form of waves. Now, I don't want to really worry about the, uh, the second bullet here, but I, but, uh, Einstein, he actually said that light is actually both a wave, as I have already discussed, like this, a wave. But he also said that light behaves like a particle, almost like uh, a little tiny piece of sand or something. It acts as something that has mass. And so it's kind of called the dual nature of light. But we're not going to key on that. We're going to key on the fact that light is actually part of the electromagnetic spectrum. All right, And this is something I'm pretty sure you've heard of before, the electromagnetic spectrum. It's a collection of energy that is going from uh, radio waves to microwaves, infrared waves, visible light, and visible light is simply energy that we can see, that's why it's called visible, ultraviolet rays, x-rays, gamma rays, these are all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. And so light is right in the middle there, and it's simply energy that travels in the form of waves. And we see that right here, it's kind of a, a, a nice illustration. Visible light is right inside here, okay? These are, the electromagnetic spectrum is consists of different parts of uh, 
different kinds of energy that is occurring in waves, and they start off as radio waves, the microwaves, infrared waves, visible light waves, ultraviolet waves, x-rays, and gamma rays. And the visible light falls right there. Okay, now that takes care of what is light. Okay, now the next thing is what causes light. All right, what causes light? I need an input of energy in order to get light. Okay, that's one thing I need. As you saw, I need the battery, the heat energy, and I also need electricity. Three examples of energy that I can use in order to make light. But what does that energy do? The energy literally causes electrons. That's right, something we've already learned about electrons to jump up energy levels. All right, when I mean jump up energy levels, I mean go from the 1s energy level to the 2s energy level, from the 2s to the 2p, from the 2p to the 3s to the 3p, and my electron that was originally down here can jump up these energy levels, meaning they can be going a farther distance away from the nucleus. But what happens is that whatever goes up must come back down, and as electrons return to the ground state, they have to get rid of that initial energy. Remember, there was an energy that was given to these electrons, whether electricity, heat, the electro electrons actually now have to come back down from this higher energy level. And as they return back down, they have to get rid of the initial input of energy. And what happens is that they give it off right here as light. It's almost, you can think of it as the conservation of energy. Energy wasn't lost. The original input of energy is still there. It has to now be returned. You know, conservation of energy says it can't be created or destroyed. It simply remains there. And in this case, it does remain, but it returns to us in the form of visible light. So any light we see is nothing more than electrons going up energy levels and on their way back down, returning to what we call the ground state, and they get rid of their initial energy in the form of visible light. So as this travels down, this is now going to emit waves of energy, waves of light that you and I would see with our eyes. This is a, a good illustration of what I'm trying to talk about. If I had an electron that was down here and I gave it a zap, whether it be with a candle or electricity, it would simply jump up higher energy levels and it would continue to go up if more energy was given to it. And then on its way back down again, once again, it has to lose that initial energy, and you can see here, it's given off waves of light as the electron goes back down to its original, what's known as its ground state. So what is light? Light is simply energy in the form of waves. These are energy. So it's energy in the form of waves. What causes light? Light is caused by electrons being stimulated from their ground state to move up higher energy levels. And on their way back down from the higher energy levels, they emit their energy that they once were given back in the form of light. And that is what we see. So any light that you can think of, any light you can think of, this is the reason behind it. In the sun, is there light? There's definitely light in the sun. What's the source of energy? Well, in the sun, there is nuclear fusion. That's a very big source of energy. In your car, to turn the car lights on, there is a battery. Any light in your house, there is electricity. Glowing embers in a fireplace. Glowing embers, the source of energy is heat. So anything you can think of that actually emits a form of light, even when a metal gets hot, it starts to glow. There was an input of heat to it. All right. That is the whole gist here of what is light, how is it formed, and how is it tied into the atom, which is what we're studying. All right, guys. Best wishes for you. If you need to rewind it, go for it. Otherwise, I'll talk to you about it tomorrow. Later.